My name is Arianna Wilson, and I'm the Director of Pre-College Programs at Tufts University's University College. As we all know, this has been a very difficult time for all of us. And with that in mind, we wanted to take this time to show you that even though our platform must change, we're still excited to bring you academics of Tufts University in our pre-college virtual campus this summer. I'm here with my pre-college teammates who I'll let introduce themselves. Hello, my name is Tara Pope. I'm the Director of Marketing for Pre-College Programs here at Tufts, and I'm responsible for getting the word out about all of our exciting summer programs. I'm excited to be here with all of you today, and we are ready for all of your questions as we dig into the Courses at Tufts for High Schoolers program. If you want to ask a question at any time, just simply find the Q&A box on your screen and type your answer in it. Our team will answer all questions at the end of the slides or during slide breaks, but feel free to ask any time and we'll do our best to get to you as soon as we can. And my name is James Spazero. I'm a program administrator for the pre-college programs here at Tufts, uh, specifically running point on courses at Tufts for high schoolers and the Tufts College experience. I'm looking forward to talking you uh, through all of our courses at Tufts for high schoolers details today, and I'm ready for your questions, so keep them coming. Thanks guys. Um, we'll begin today by giving you a brief overview of how our virtual campus will work and what program updates we've made. Then we'll take you through program highlights as well as exciting virtual social engagements we have planned for these sessions. In addition, we'll share details on our application process, deadlines, and policies. As Tara mentioned, if you have questions throughout the presentation, you're welcome to post them in the Q&A section of your screen and we'll answer as many questions as we can during our one hour session. If you include your email address when you post the question and we don't get to it, we'll answer you via email. As you prepare for your summer 2020 virtual campus experience with us, we want you to remember, even though our programs all need to move online this summer, you can still expect the same world-class academics that you would with any course or program at Tufts. As well, thanks to our virtual campus and online tools, you will still be able to develop those lifelong friendships with peers from around the globe. Our faculty, staff, and pre-college team have made it our priority to transform these programs, including the same engaging content students and parents alike would expect from a summer program at Tufts. And you can do it all from the comfort of your own home from anywhere in the world, live on screen. Great. Um, <clears throat> we're glad you're excited about courses at Tufts for high schoolers. Uh, I know we all are. Uh, in this program, students can enroll in college level courses uh, at Tufts for credit. There are two sessions of CATHS, uh, as we call it around the office. The first runs from May 20th to June 26th, and the second runs from June 30th to August 7th. This program is available to rising ho uh, high school sophomores through graduating seniors. Um, since our full summer course catalog has moved to our summer 2020 virtual campus, CATHS is now an even more flexible program that allows students to earn up to 10 credits per session, which is usually about two courses per session. Um, we're offering more than 115 uh, courses to high school students this summer across the, uh, both of the sessions, most of which are Tufts undergraduate courses taught by our world-renowned Tufts faculty and staff, who are among the most respected members of their fields. Uh, the full list of courses can be found at courses.tufts.edu, uh, and we'll also drop a link to all of the courses uh, later on during the Q&A. Um, students will receive Tufts credit upon successful completion of the courses and may request a transcript at the end of the program. Um, enrollment uh, in any courses at Tufts allows students to take advantage of the college preparation workshops. Um, that includes the SAT prep workshop and the admissions essay writing workshops, um, which are offered free of charge. And students may also enroll in the College Prep 101 workshop for an additional fee. And we'll get into that a little bit more in the next slide as well. Um, a feature of courses at Tufts for High Schoolers are our uh, pre-college Hallmark courses, Health Science Honors, um, Health Science Honors, Bioinformatics Through Sequencing, um, and, and a few more that we'll get to later. Um, those are designed specifically for high schoolers and are meant to bridge the gap between high school and college. Um, 
And these are taught by brilliant visiting faculty who have experience designing courses for a high school aged audience. Um, so yeah, as you can see on your screen there, we have four Hallmark courses, um, Health Science Honors, Bioinformatic Inquiry Through Sequencing, Foundations of Law and Ethics, and the Tough Summer Writing Program. Um, and like we said before, we have those workshops there, which are all, uh, the, the first two are offered free of charge, and the last one uh, is for an additional fee. Um, and just keep in mind with all of our courses, with the exception of the fact that they're no longer being taught in person, these are the same top quality courses that you would expect of Tufts University, taught by world renowned Tufts faculty who are among the most respected members of their field, whatever that field may be. Uh, in addition to the online application, this program requires a transcript, one letter of recommendation, and a parent permission form. And during the application process, you will make your course selections. Um, like I said, I will be dropping the link to the course list um, later on into the chat box. Currently, all completed applications are due by May 15th for session one and June 15th for session two. As always, any final payment is due the first day of the term in order to participate. Um, for other policy questions or program details, please visit our site at tufts.edu or email us anytime at precollege at tufts.edu. Um, you can see in the slide, again, the dates of each session and the deadlines for each. As this open house is intended to give you as much information as you would like to know about courses at Tufts for high schoolers, we'll spend the remainder of time answering your questions as well as other frequently asked questions about them. Uh, we've been taking notes of the questions that have been asked throughout the presentation so far and let's get some free posts to the QA um, and we can continue to answer everything that comes through. Um, if you don't think of your question before today's session is over or we haven't gotten to it to you via email or we can call you on the phone. Again, feel free to contact us anytime um, via email or phone. Okay, um, so I see our first live question. Um, is the art history course going to be offered for the summer? James, do, can you uh, answer Amy on that one? Um, yeah, so, I'm trying to think. We have a fine arts and art history um, department. They're offering a number of courses. Um, FAH uh, 55 and 155, which is cross-listed, um, will not be continuing this summer. Um, so those were the sort of intro um, courses, but there's still a number of courses offered through art history. Um, if you go to the course list that I just dropped into the chat, um, you should be able to see all of our course offerings, uh, and that's updated daily. So if uh, uh, you scroll all the way to the bottom of those course lists, you'll be able to see what has become unavailable. Um, so check there for complete details on specific courses. Great, thanks, James. Mm -hmm. um, so I have another question here. Uh, that is, please provide details regarding the auditing options. Is that something, James, that you can go into or Ariana? Yeah, so um, you'll be able to see, if you go to um, the Browse Courses link from the course list page, um, you'll be able to see specifically the um, auditing policy for different courses. Um, the vast majority of courses do offer an auditing option, um, but once again, that's going to operate on a course by course basis. Um, so, so check the uh, course list link there. Um, auditing is an option for the vast majority of our courses though. Thanks, James. Yep. Um, another question I have here is what is the schedule like? Um, so James, I don't know if you can, can speak to that a little bit about the differences of courses or the schedules of them. Yeah, so um, with the transition to virtual, um, the vast majority of our courses have kept their sort of um, meeting pattern and schedule. Some of them have changed. Some of them have gone asynchronous. Um, it really the, it really depends on what you want. Um, courses at Tufts for High Schoolers is very free form in terms of uh, course scheduling. It's really just whichever courses you see that interest you, you can you can take them as long as you meet the prereqs and they don't conflict. Um, generally, we advise 
trying to take a morning course and afternoon and evening course just to have some sort of schedule structure and um, sort of factor in free time and homework time and all that kind of stuff to your schedule. Um, but every student's schedule will look different since this is, um, you know, all just open enrollment courses. Great. Thank you for that. And let us know, like you said, if you have any other questions. Um, so I'm getting a bunch of questions now, so I'm going to try to go through them as best in order as I can. Um, how will Labs for Science courses be completed? Uh, yeah, so that's going to be taken care of on a departmental level. The different departments, be it chemistry, physics, um, whatever department it may be that's offering the course, um, they're going to uh, they, they have their own policies on that and their own sort of pedagogy for that. Um, I know that within pre-college specifically, you know, we have um, certain pieces that are going to be offered by um, you know, small group seminars uh, via Zoom or whatever technology may be used and some might be sending kits. Uh, we're still figuring out the details of that. If you have a question on a specific course, um, feel free to call us or email us uh, and we will reach out to the department and see what the plan is on that specifically. And I imagine that'll also be reflected uh, in the syllabus when it becomes available. Um, so you'll be completely filled in on that as the time comes. Great, thanks James. Uh, mm -hmm. Next question is, is there a cap on the number of students per course? Given the online nature, can you provide some examples of live engagement versus just viewing lectures online? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Um, I, I feel like, you know, I, I have um, sort of said this for a lot of them, but once again, um, because there are so many courses offered over so many departments, it's going to vary from course to course. Some courses have caps as small as five people. Some have caps as as high as, you know, 150 people. It really depends on, you know, for instance, a, a big calculus lecture versus a small creative writing workshop. The cap's going to vary. Um, the majority of our courses have maintained the same cap from uh, in person to the transition to virtual. Um, and some um, may have expanded slightly. Uh, I know that we have a pre-college intensive uh, that we run that has expanded now because um, there's no longer a cap on physical space. Um, but if you go to uh, the student information system or the course catalog specifically for um, Tufts University, you'll be able to view enrollment caps. Um, and once again, in the uh, course list link that I sent to the chat, there is a browse courses option um, and you'll be able to view the enrollment cap on all of those. I will say some courses do also have specific caps as to how many high schoolers can be in it because they are also offered to undergraduates. Um, so just be aware of that if you see any specific caps for, for high schoolers. And then as far as examples of live engagement versus just viewing lectures, like I said, uh, it depends on the course, but um, for instance, take the uh, creative writing for fiction course that's offered. Uh, a lot of that will be done with sort of small groups. If, you, if you've ever used Zoom before, uh, there's a functionality called breakout rooms where you can put a smaller group of students into a room by themselves on Zoom to talk amongst themselves, share their ideas. Uh, a lot of professors prefer to use the chat function as well to get students ideas. It depends on how the professor wants to use the technology. Um, but most seminar courses and sort of small discussion courses that are transitioning to virtual plan on keeping the same sort of you know, tight round table kind of format. Great. Thanks so much, James. Um, I have a quick question here that says, are high school students in class with college students? Um, the answer to that is yes. These are undergraduate courses, so um, there will be actual college students in most of these classes, other than the um, Hallmark courses and, and prep courses, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um, the next class, uh, sorry, the next question is, will classes be recorded for students who live in a different time zone? Um, I know that with some of the intensive programs, there are some discussions regarding different cohorts of timing based on time zones, um, depending on the number of students that will be in each of them so that there will be in some of them live portions in different time zones. Um, but I, I would, as far as the individual courses go, I think that they all will be recorded, but James, I'm going to, or Ariane, I'm going to defer to you on, on that answer. 
Yeah, Ariana, do you have anything to, to add there? Um, no, I would just echo that each program um, is going to be done a little bit differently depending on the content. Um, I do believe that all of it is going to be recorded, but in terms of student engagement on a day to day basis, the syllabus and specific course instructor will let you know what, what uh, portions of the session needs to be live versus what the students will need to do on their own from a pre recorded um, lecture or you know, activity. Yeah, um, and I can also say uh, specifically with pre college, um, you know, anything that we have been uh, helping plan the program for, we've done our best as well to try to, you know, see if there are any critical masses of students in certain time zones where it might make sense to run a certain session at that time or seeing about hiring TAs who can work in different time zones, all that kind of stuff. So uh, everyone's doing their best to try to accommodate um, as many students as we possibly can uh, from a time perspective, uh, but it is going to vary on the specific course and content. Um, it is going to the course lists um, in terms of what courses are offered. We have noted that the course list link, the session two page does not work. We will contact technology about that. However, if you go to the session one, not the PDF, but the uh, box on the left and you go to the left hand side, you'll see that you can click options for what courses you want to view. If you just click session two in the um, in the, top or in the box where it says turn, you'll be able to see the courses that are available um, by clicking. But thank you for pointing out that uh, the link is not working. Um, thank you. In terms of prerequisites, as another question that came up for uh, specific classes, if once you go to the course list, if you click on any course that you're interested in, it typically will say if any are required. Great. Thanks, Ariana. Um, I'm going to jump back over to the chat. I know we have some questions in the chat and some in the Q&A. Um, what is the difference between three week and six week programs? Are the three week more concentrated? I believe um, so the for the pre college programs, the courses that test for high schoolers that we're talking about here are all um, session long courses, so either session one or session two or some of them, I think, span both. Um, but the three week, or the two to three week are the more intensive. So yes, those are focused on a specific subject. We have six of them within the pre-college uh, program this summer. And for over the next two days, that's what I was talking about. We will be doing individual open houses for each of them. Um, we have mini med school. We have an engineering design lab, a coding 101, an art intensive at the SMFA, leadership for social change and international relations um, as well as a mini med school um, so all of those are the three-week program and yes they are more concentrated in those subjects um, versus these are actually courses um, some which are for credit through this program um, and the next class the next question how large are the classes on average i think that was already somewhat addressed um, they will it will depend on the courses and the caps and the different professors but if you have always as with any of these questions if you have something specific in mind please feel free to email or call us and we'd be happy to get back to you as soon as we can with a, an answer around those specific courses um we have another question here are there college course equivalents to ap courses james or ariana is that something that one of you can address um, we don't offer dual and that students would get credit um, at the high school level for the course that they take. However, if you look into the specific course that you want and you're wondering the alignment between the AP course itself, typically it will give the um, corollary AP or, or high school course that it, the content would mimic. Um, just that we're offering in the in the college format. Great, thank you. Um, our last question in the chat is, and then there's some more in Q and A. We have, how do you grade student work for the pre-college summer courses? Um, I think 
Yeah, I can, go ahead, James. I'll let you take it. Sorry. Yeah, I, I can jump in here. Um, I'm going to assume this is um, well, so there's a couple ways I can interpret this question. And if I'm interpreting it wrong, just let me know in the chat or the Q&A. Um, as far as all courses, you know, in general that high schoolers can take, once again, that depends on a departmental level. They have different grading policies. Um, so you'll have to check the syllabus for that or the department website. Um, for the Hallmark courses, it's sort of the same deal. Each of these professors has their own methodology. Um, and keep in mind with the Hallmark courses, these professors um, do have experience with uh, teaching specifically to a high school ages audience. Um, so their grading policy will also uh, reflect that. Um, and in general, um, like we mentioned, you have the option with most courses to audit or to take it for credit. If you take it for credit, you can receive a letter grade. Um, so it'll be, you know, a letter grade as it shows up on a transcript. But um, if there's a question about a specific course, you'll have to look into that specifically. There's, uh, you know, with 115 plus courses and 30 plus departments, it's um, hard to say something across the board. Great. Thanks, James. Um, mm -hmm. Do you see a question here? Uh, if this is successful, do you see this becoming an option next year too? Ariana, do you wanna um, take that one? Yeah, so I mean, our plans are definitely to continue Course of the Tufts for high schoolers into both the next academic year and the summer. Um, to note that Course of the Tufts does run during both academic um, school year semesters in the fall and in the spring. Um, in terms of the online format, some courses are as an online class, either both offered in person or online. And I think while we don't have plans for if all programming will go online in subsequent years, um, it may offer additional capacity to have online courses that are not in person or courses that revert to back to in person classes. Um, again, we don't have what those plans will be for next summer, but I think it will definitely offer new opportunities for us to expand our offerings. Thanks, Ariana. Um, another question we have is, are the two to three week intensives for credit? Um, I believe the answer to that is no, Ariana, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I believe the, the, some of the courses at Tufts for high schoolers that we're talking about here can be for credit, but I don't believe the intensives are. So there are opportunities to for the intensives. Um, if you go to our website, you can see each program broken down as to what type of credit is is offered. Sorry, thank you, Ariana. Um, the next question that I am looking at over here in the Q and A. Um, sorry, a bunch keep popping in, and I just don't want to miss any for you guys. Um, Is there a difference in cost if your high school student is not seeking college credit? Um, yeah, I can I can take this. And actually, before I jump in, I just want to mention, I mentioned in the chat, the uh, link to the Session 2 course list on the course list site has been updated. Thank you for pointing that out. You should be able to view it now. Um, as far as different costs uh, between seeking credit and not seeking credit, yes, there is um, a, <coughs> sorry, uh, a difference in cost uh, between auditing and taking the class for credit. Um, you can view that um, and all the cost breakdowns on the website and on the browse courses link. Um, generally, it's about 990 per credit um, for credit, and then it's reduced for, uh, for auditing. Great. Thanks, James. Mm -hmm. um, sorry. There's a lot popping in and it keeps moving on me, so I want to make sure, again, I don't miss them. Um, can you please expand on what type of social opportunities there will be? I think that um, currently what we're working on is, is, is figuring out what those will be. So unfortunately, I don't have any direct answers for you right now, but it's definitely something that you could reach out to us uh, in more detail about specific programs and we can answer those questions as they become available. Yeah, and I'll also point out here um, in general, um, 
you know, there are always social opportunities associated with our programs. The Tufts College Experience, uh, which is another course or another program that we offer, um, is more of a full package in terms of, um, you know, university life in addition to courses. So um, that will have probably a slightly expanded menu of social options uh, compared to courses at Tufts for high schoolers, which generally when it's in person is, you know, a commuter only um, sort of open enrollment courses kind of kind of program. Great, thank you. Um, is there still um, need based financial aid available? Yes, so this is one of our most common questions that we get and I knew we would get it at some point. Um, need based financial aid is still available. We have a limited pool um, upon admission into the program you'll have the option to indicate that you're uh, interested in being considered for financial aid, at which point the financial aid uh, application will be added to your account within 30 minutes or so. Um, it's a short application, it's a one page form, just asks for things like parents adjusted gross income, household size, uh, and then uh, we review those all in a batch. Um, we're a little bit pushed back on our schedule right now as far as uh, reviewing financial aid applications because we have to know what our enrollments look like in the transition to the virtual course or the virtual program. Um, but in short, yes, there is still need based, uh, need based financial aid available. Great. Thanks, James. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, next question. Um, is there is the student experience any different if you're auditing versus taking the class for credit? Um, that's a good question. It depends on the course, but generally the answer is no. As far as programmatically, from our end, there is no difference whatsoever. Um, in class, 99% of the time the answer is no. Um, the only difference is that um, some professors, uh, for instance, if there are group projects and someone is auditing the class versus taking it for a grade, they may change how they assign groups. Um, and once again, that'll kind of depend on the course, but the vast majority of the time it, it won't uh, make a substantial difference in the experience. Thanks, James. Um, and just an update um, on what Ariana had said, um, International Relations, Coding 101, and Leadership for Social Change are all for credit um, intensive programs, just to update that answer from earlier. Um, I think that I have come to the end of the Q&A and chat question. Oh, sorry. Um, oh, someone is asking to state the link again for the the summer virtual courses. Um, yes. I'll, I'll drop can, uh, all those links again just before we end this. And we can also um, email them out to all of you as well. If, if anyone is looking for them and you didn't get it or afterwards, you've missed something, again, please feel free to email, call, whatever, and, and we will get anything you need to you. Um, just looking through, sorry. Um, another question, uh, will my credits transfer to uh, my high school or slash college? Um, yeah, so that's a good question. Um, the answer is, like most of what I said before, um, kind of dependent on your home institution. Um, generally, most uh, similar institutions to Tufts, which are four year degree granting colleges and universities will accept credit. Um, as far as high schools, you'll have to ask your registrar um, or guidance counselor what the credit transfer policy is. Uh, in some cases, colleges will allow it to transfer for credit, but not to fulfill certain requirements. Um, in other cases, they'll accept it for requirements. For instance, if you take, you know, uh, general chemistry, it could count towards, um, you know, a natural sciences uh, general education requirement. Um, but you'll have to check specifically with your home institution for that. Great, thanks, James. Um, Another question is, is there a credit minimum maximum? Can I take a co course during both summer sessions? Yeah, so for courses at Tufts for high schoolers, there is no credit minimum. 
uh, we have, you know, one credit workshops that you can take and that could be all you take. Um, there is a credit maximum of 10, uh, 10 credits per session. Um, we do recommend that you not exceed eight credits per session, just because at that point, um, the course load can get very demanding, especially if you haven't taken university level uh, courses before. Um, and especially when considering that summer courses are generally taught in a you know more condensed format, um, happening over a shorter period of time with the same amount of work as uh, the fall and spring semesters. Uh, and you can definitely take courses during both summer sessions, session one and session two. And additionally, some courses are offered over the course of 12 weeks instead of six weeks. Uh, and you can see all that info on the course list. Okay, great. Thanks, James. Um, I have another question that just came through. Is there a required amount of classes to take to be in the six week? Uh, program. I'm assuming that's referring to the college experience. So James, I will let you take that one as well. Yeah. So for the Tufts college experience, which is, I think you're right in assuming that's what they're referring to, um, you need to take two courses. Um, some courses will additionally have lab or recitation sections. Um, those don't count towards the two course uh, requirement. So for instance, if you take physics one, which is you know, three different sections, uh, you still need to take one other course. Um, and once again, with that, it's a maximum of 10 credits, uh, but we strongly advise against doing more than eight. Just to clarify, for courses at Tufts, however, you can just take one course. It's not, it's not a requirement that you take more than one. Yep. Okay, great. Um, I think that I, oh, where can you find the link for the two to three week classes? Um, if you go to precollege.tufts.edu, um, you will be able to, you scroll down right on our homepage, you'll be able to see all of the intensive programs right under the large hero image and you can scroll left or right to view them. Uh, you can also go, like I said earlier, to go.tufts.edu slash open house, um, where you'll be able to register for um, one of the open houses for each of those two to three week intensives that are happening tomorrow and Thursday if, if you want more information on those. Um, oh, we got a couple more popping in. Um, is enrollment to pre-college summer courses selective? Um, I'm going to pass that off to Ariana and James to speak to. Yeah, Ariana, do you want to start off on that? Yeah, so um, it is a highly competitive program or or list of programs that we have um, um, are based on, you know, just capacity of the program, but each individual program has a list of requirements, um, some of which are grade point average. We do require recommendations and transcripts for each of our programs. So with a comprehensive review of your whole and those documents, we do select students um, based on the submission. Great, thank you, Ariana. Um, is it possible to take art classes virtually at the museum school? Um, and I can answer that one, it is. Um, and I believe there's 10 or 11 courses available for the summer um, in total from the School of the Museum of Fine Arts at Tufts. Um, and James, I will, I'm not sure that all of them are open to high school students, but I assume that they are. Um, so, so yes, they are moving some virtually online to answer your question. Yeah, and I believe they're all open to high schoolers. Um, some of them do have prerequisites and uh, oftentimes, especially, you know, for instance, with the uh, SMFA intensive program that we run, we do have an option to submit an art portfolio just to show that you have experience with certain types of media um, and an artistic medium. Um, but yeah, that depends on a course level. So just look at the course list and let us know if you have any questions. Great, thank you. Um, 
we have I'm just trying to go through and look now. Um, there is a question that popped up um, that a lot of classes are unavailable and are we planning to add more? Um, so, yes, with the transition, a lot of unable to transition to a virtual format. However, we are working with um, faculty and departments to add as many classes as we can or support them in the transition to the online format. So definitely um, keep a lookout and keep uh, up this as it may change. Yeah, and um little look behind the curtain here. I personally um, check the department lists every single day uh, and we make any updates, including when classes fill up. Um, so that course list is updated daily. Um, so you'll be the first to know about any updates that happen. Great, thanks James. Uh, we should have <laughs> another question pop in. Can you talk a little bit about College 101? Yeah, so College Prep 101 um, is a workshop that we offer on Fridays. Um, it's essentially just geared towards um, giving students all the skills that they need to succeed in college, including the application process and beyond. Um, in per we're still finalizing the details as far as what universities are going to be involved and that kind of stuff, but um, it usually starts off with uh, a sort of admissions talk or college life talk. Um, as well as uh, uh, Q&A with admissions counselors. Um, and then the afternoon sessions are generally virtual campus tours um, with greater Boston area colleges. I know that we have um, confirmed with several colleges, but just for instance, Amherst College, Boston College, Harvard University are all um, on our list for this summer. Um, and like we said, for courses at Tufts for high schoolers, you can take that uh, separately, there is an addition, uh, additional cost um, associated with it, unlike the free workshops, but uh, it is an excellent experience and uh, we put a lot of work into it to make it really worth your while and really helpful for the entire college experience. Great, thanks so much, James. Um, so I think I have gotten to everyone's questions in the Q&A. Um, as far as an and in the chat window, unless I've missed something, I apologize if I did, and we will can go back and scan through, or you're welcome to pop it up again. Um, at this time, is there any other questions um, that anyone has about any of the courses at Tufts or any questions about the upcoming um, virtual open houses or other programs within pre-college? All right, well, I think that is, I think that is it. So um, I will pass things over to Ariana. Yeah, thank you, Tara and James, and for all of you for attending today um, and for your interest in Summer 2020 Courses at Tufts for High Schoolers virtual campus. Um, a reminder, you're always welcome to call or email us with any further questions. Uh, as James mentioned, um, he's the links again into the chat, but we can also email them to you. Um, you can also view much of this information as well as those links at precollege.tufts.edu. Um, and we are looking forward to seeing you virtually soon. Thank you. Great. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.